All right, we've got a lot of news to get to this week, and the first one comes to... It's funny. I, I looked at the domain, and I was like, their cord. No, that's the record. The record <laughs> the, dot media. That's right. Didn't make sense for a second. All right, Chrome will limit access to private networks, citing security reasons. So is this saying that that my my Chrome, if I tell it to go somewhere, will will not let me go to that where? So kind of, but not the way in which you're thinking about it. Okay. So if you're like, hey, I want to go access a website, it's not going to tell you, no, you can't go to that website. So what what they're trying to implement is a new protocol to stop malware from reaching inside of your own home personal network and accessing resources there. Mm -hmm. That's what this is all about. So it is a security bump like so that... They don't go, oh, well, how about that? There's a nice router at 192.168.0.1. Maybe it has a vulnerability that I can exploit and start to have some sort of conversation with it. And that's that's a, so from now on, what it'll do with this new protocol is it will say, if I receive a request for an internal resource, it must first pass the test that we allow that type of thing. If it doesn't, which by default nothing will, then it won't allow access into those resources, so it makes you safer. And we should have those private IP addresses that you would think theoretically should be obfuscated, but there's tax that reach right through those, right, today well, without this technology. E even if they're, like, not giving it out, they're mm -hmm. very common. So sure. most things, when you pull them up out of the box and they got a network connection of some site, are probably defaulted to some sort of 192. Sure, right? absolutely. Especially when it comes to like home routers. And I could think of 1.1 and 0.1 right off the top of my head. Right, okay. so you yeah. just guess that that is true. Sure. And it goes, oh yeah, I have something at 192.168.0.1. Okay. Here you go. Uh, oh, let me pass a username and admin or, and password to it and see if that gets anywhere. So the yeah. division between public and private IP addresses doesn't Just kind of gets blurred. So you're, sure. you're basically your browser becomes a proxy Interesting. from the outside to in, and that's where the danger lies, and they're trying to mitigate that. And the proxies aren't anything new, right? We've been using proxies for well, a while, but we've been doing everybody goes through a web server, not everybody has... This is a little different, right? Well, yeah. Because everybody a has different. a web browser. Well, man, the proxies you're talking about are mm. purposeful. Like, yes. We know and intend to use them for the purposes of filtering or caching or mm -hmm. both or whatever, right? So mm -hmm. th those are great. When you don't know that your browser has become a proxy to a malicious group, that's a problem. Yes, it is. Right. So that's what they're trying to mitigate using oh, this new protocol. And when you said everyone has a, a web browser too, not to brag, but I have three. Oh, oh I bet. You probably you. got yeah. 50 tabs don't, open too. Don't be bougie. Yeah. 25. Yeah. Three <laughs> they're browsers. All free. They're all free. Do you have a Veblen browser? Don't know what that means. Yeah, that's a fun word. Go look that up. Veblen Goods. V e b l e n Veblen. I've learned <laughs> not to type in things that you guys tell me to type uh, in. Wes is on his computer right now. Going, yeah. Enjoy I your virus. Totally <laughs> there. Not doing that. So, <laughs> is this, uh, Daniel? Would you say like this is is stopping a a pretty common attack vector? Or I don't know how common it is. Honestly, I don't. Uh, you know, I'm more of a um, of an attacker than I am a defender. But I do it for defensive purposes, right? Yeah. So as far as like statistically how how often this happens, I did see a couple of articles that were linked in this article that talked about some use cases where that actually occurred. And it is kind of complex in, at least from what I was seeing tertiarily. Um, so I would assume this doesn't happen often, but I'm assuming that it does happen enough that Clearly Google, enough that, Google yeah. is like, you know what, we should probably do something about this uh, before it becomes horrible and dumpster fire style. On a negative side, though, from a like a system admin perspective, would this make anything harder? Like, oh, now you can't get to the Internet or. So if you were like running a website, that might make it more difficult, right? Because now you have to understand that browsers are not going to be defaulted to the fact that it'll allow for this. Mm -hmm. So if you have an internal resource that you are reaching to that, so if I make a request to a website and it needs to grab a resource that is internal to that domain, then these things need to be allowed. Otherwise it's going to go. It's not the, it's not the only way we've ever seen this before. This is what cores is all about. The mm -hmm. cross origin resource sharing thing that happens when uh, you'll see these headers in uh, your HTTP requests. That's what it's trying to help with. Like, oh, this didn't originate from me, therefore I'm not gonna allow for it. It seems to be the same type of idea, at least along those those veins. I really, 
I haven't seen a lot of technical details on this, just an overview on what they want to do and how they want to work it. So I would assume it would be kind of along the same lines as that. You just have to add another step maybe. If you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there.